Hello, and welcome to this vlog. My name's Bailey. That's Ava. So, <laughs> she just insists on being annoying, but we love her anyways. So, this is a direct continuation to the vlog I just posted, which was last week's reading vlog. So, we're gonna be building off of that. Last week was super productive, so hopefully this week will be just as good. Do you wanna- you should intro yourself if you're gonna be here. Your name's Ava. You can introduce yourself. Um, what are you reading? I'll, you talk about what you're reading and then I'll talk about what I'm reading. Why me first? Because I'm, I'm holding it. Life, which is a very rare endeavor into historical fiction for me, but a friend lent it to me and it's taken me forever, but we're finally gonna do it. No, same friend who lent her that said lent me this, so. Yeah. Same person. Well, theoretically, theoretically it should be good. I've been seeing so far, I'm like 16 pages in. She's like a midwife in these camps. It's a label, the Holocaust label camps or whatever. Mm. And then it's historical fiction, right? So in this thing, like Eva Braun, you know, Hitler's, you know, so and so. Yes. <laughs> um, she's pregnant with his child, and they're like, hey, we want a good midwife, so they call up her. And she's like, well, you know, midwife, oh, I gotta keep the ch child alive, but also, like, Hitler's child. Mm. So. Well, that was her. She'll be sitting here as I try and probably fail to give you a synopsis of a deadly education, which is what I just started to. Okay. <laughs> Because I'm not going to put it back on for this. This is too low quality for them. I started this today. I'm 17 pages in. I have thoughts already, but that's aside from the point. A synopsis of this. I don't really know. I read the synopsis. I tried very hard, as Ava can attest to, that I tried hard to prepare. But I don't get the synopsis. <laughs> but basically, it follows a girl. I don't remember her name. That's not good. Okay, it's, it's, some, it's like Gal Galadriel, I think. Something like that. Anyway, it follows a girl named Galadriel. <laughs> And she's, well, I've heard things about her personality, but I'm just gonna say she's kind of something. But she goes to this school called the Scalamans, and it's like this multi-layered school, and like once you get to the bottom, you have to fight your way out to survive, and a lot of people die. And they're all wielding like magic and stuff, and she has this thing against this guy for reasons. His name's Orion. I have since discovered that his name is Orion, so oops. I don't know if this is dual perspective yet because I haven't even finished the first chapter because these chapters are long or at least the first chapter is long but he like saves her life twice I think and that pisses her off because she doesn't want to have the reputation of being a damsel so now she's got this like kind of urge to kill him and that's kind of all I got from the synopsis and the 17 pages I've read so take that how you will. Anyway the 17 pages I've read though I have thoughts. I've already kind of divulged this to you, but I've read obviously 17 pages, like I've said that four times now, that's too many times, but it's like a full on info dump, these last pages have been, and it's talking all about the magic system, which is fine and dandy, but I don't understand any of it. And I can't tell if I'm being dumb or this is just describing it so horribly. So I wanna give myself like the benefit and be like, I'm being fine, but I can't say for sure yet. But yeah, this whole like first chapter has been an info dump about the magic system. And while it's like been telling me a lot, it hasn't been describing enough for it to actually make sense to me. Like for example, there's mana, which like I can contextual, like through context clues, I can figure out what that is kind of, but it hasn't actually described it to me at all. And then I need to know what mana is to know what Malia is, which is like something I can't, I don't even know what it is. I can't even describe it to you because I have no idea, <laughs> but it keeps talking about it and it throws out these magical terms but like doesn't describe them in any detail, but starts using them like I should know what they are and I don't know what they are. So I think it's it. I think this is doing a bad job at explaining and I'm fine. But at the same time, I'm still having the problem. So the book is still winning, you know what I mean? So I don't know, I'm, I'm confused. I don't even like the writing. I don't like the way it's written because it's like the main character's like talking to me. It, she's like, I know what you're thinking. And I'm like, you don't know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that I don't understand the book. You know what I mean? Like, I I don't know. I don't know about this one yet. There's also been a lot of controversy around it and like racism, which I'm not going to talk about yet because I'm 17 pages in. But I've heard enough to kind of have some opinions. <laughs> but I'll talk about that later when I finish the book and give, can give you all the context. But yeah, we'll see how this goes. We're about to read and be productive. But yeah welcome did i say my name i think i did but i can't remember i'm bailey so yay let's read i look so tired 
and it's because I am. Um, hello. I don't really want to talk too much right now because I just don't feel like it, but I did want to mention that I started Stars Above by Marissa Meyer on audiobook, and I'm about halfway through already. Like, I started today at work, and now I'm halfway because I listen to audiobooks really fast. But yeah, this is why I mention it because I'm going to finish it probably today or tomorrow, so like, it'll contextualize when I talk about it later. But this is a short story bind-up of stories that take place in the Lunar Chronicles world. I have read a few of these stories before. I've read the first three about twice, I think, and I've read the last one once. But I've never read the whole thing. I've never filled in and read the rest of them in the middle. And this is the last thing in the Lunar Chronicles world that I have to read before I'm, like, officially done with the series. I just don't like short story collections in general. Yeah, I just don't- I don't love short story collections because I don't really have interest in characters' lives before series start. Like, I don't really care about that after I read a series, so. Yeah, I've mixed opinions on some of these stories, but I'll talk to you about them later when I finish this. This is also on my Clear Your Shit Readathon TBR. I don't remember what the prompt is for that. I'm trying to read it. It's on the wall over there. On Shelf the Longest. Makes sense. I don't think it's been on there the longest longest, but it's been on there for a while because I got this when I read Winter, and that was right when Winter and this had come out, I guess. And so it's been around on my shelf a while, and I've been wanting to finally finish it to like be able to say that I've completely finished the Lunar Chronicles. So yeah, I'm definitely going to finish this today or tomorrow, so. Hello. So like I said, I finished Stars Above. I am a god with audiobooks and I can listen to them really really fast. So yeah, I ended up finishing this and I ended up giving it four stars, which is not bad. Um, for a short story collection, that's actually pretty good because I always uh, take like the rating of each one and then like do the average. I will talk to you about my like rating breakdown in a second after I give you I guess a synopsis of this series or this book or whatever. So this, like I mentioned before, is a short story collection that takes place after the Lunar Chronicles. This takes place after Wires and Nerve. This is the Lunar Chronicles, by the way. So this takes place after Wire and Nerve. Wires and Nerve. Um, it has an assortment of stories. There's only one story that takes place after the series. So like, there's only one story that takes place after Wire and, Wires and Nerve. The rest of them take place in the childhood of an assortment of the characters in the book, the main cast. Um, and there's one that's just kind of, like, random. Like, it doesn't really have any of the main characters. But, like, one does make a cameo. So, just, like, short stories occurring in the world and, like, pertaining to the past of the characters, basically. The synopsis of the Lunar Chronicles itself, um, it's a series of fairy tale retellings in this, like, sci-fi fantasy sort of shebang, you know? The first one is Cinder, and it's obviously a Cinderella retelling. It follows a cyborg named Cinder. <laughs> And she is a mechanic, and she's dealing with her horrid stepfamily. Tying into, like, the sci-fi fantasy, there are lunars, aka people who live on the moon. And these lunars have this ability called a glamour, or they can, like, do a glamour, whatever. Um, and they can, like, alter appearances and alter thoughts and stuff. And at the beginning of the series, tensions are coming to a head between Luna and Earth. And Cinder has a role in that that she does not know yet, but she'll discover it throughout the series. I hate describing books that I like. Like, I can't describe Arsha. I suck at giving a synopsis for that. I suck at giving a synopsis for the Lunar Chronicles. It's just how it is. Anyway, so stars above. This was the last thing in the Lunar Chronicles I had yet to read, and I got super emotional finishing this, like, officially, because, like, that's it. That's all the Lunar Chronicles has. And I just finished it. There's no more Lunar Chronicles to read that I haven't read, so it was kind of sad. Um, the Lunar Chronicles is one of my favorite series. It is what brought me and my best friend Ava, who was in the first clip, together as friends. And I don't know, it just holds a special place in my heart. I love these characters. I love the story. Um, this book I've had a hard time reading, just again, because I don't really like short story collections. But I did end up liking a few of these stories. To preface everything, I have read the first three stories three times now. And the last story twice, because the last story is the one that takes place at the end of, like, the series. So when I bought the book, I just read that one immediately and then didn't read the rest of it, because I just wanted more content from the series, like, chronologically. But yeah, I have read the first three stories a few times, because every time I tried to read the book, I would read it from the beginning and then give up. <laughs> but yeah, let me do my rating breakdown for you here. So the first story, which is The Keeper, I gave 3.5 stars. I don't really have much to say about it. It was good. I liked it. The second story, Glitches, I gave three stars. And the reason I did is because it follows very heavily Cinder as a child. Um, and like the step 
mother and like stepsister thing and I hate Cinderella retellings and I hate the story of Cinderella now so I didn't really enjoy that. I just can't stand watching somebody be a doormat and being abused by somebody and like not really standing up for themselves. It really frustrates me so like I feel like in the future I'm going to avoid Cinderella retellings like the plague because I just hate them like I cannot tolerate them anymore. Um, when I read Cinder originally I didn't really have that problem but now I just like Mm. The third story, which is The Queen's Army, I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. I love this story so much. It's about Wolf. I just love this story. I don't have much to say about it, I just do. Uh, the next story, which is Carswell's Guide to Being Lucky, I gave a 2.5. I just do not like this story. I hate Thorne's attitude. He doesn't really like- I don't dislike Thorne in general, but I hated the attitude he had in this book. Because, by the way, all of the characters in these books are very young. Like, they're, like, either, like, 8-9- or like up to 16. Like you get a large age range in that way. And in this story, uh, Thorn is 13. And he's like using these girls and flirting with people and being such a womanizer and a player. And I'm like, one, you're 13. That's kind of unrealistic. I don't think I've ever met a 13 year old like that. And two, it's just kind of gross. Like I like Thorn. I like his personality, but I'm like, can you stop womanizing? And this is a theme in the last story. Like people are joking about him flirting with other girls when he's like in a committed relationship. I'm like, oh. That's kind of weird. I don't hate him. Like, after having a few years to look at that again, I'm like, um, I don't enjoy... I don't enjoy that. Because I read this series a few years ago. I think three years ago. Never found a problem with that. Now I'm kind of like, um... <laughs> mm, not sure about that. The next one is As Sunshine Passes By, which I gave four stars. This is about Cress. It was sad. The next one is just The Princess and the Guard, which is about Winter and Jason. I gave five out of five stars. I love this story with all my heart. I just... That couple I love... And I just loved reading about their past. It was super emotional for me and just adorable in other ways. The next one is The Little Android, which I gave two stars, but really like a 1.5 because I am so confused. The ending bit like was just like, what? And it's not really about any of the main characters. It's like a Little Mermaid retelling with an android that's kind of thrown in there. Cinder does make an appearance in it, but it's not about her. That one was weird. I wasn't into that. The next one is The Mechanic and that I gave a 4.5 because I just loved it. It was so good. It was the first meeting between Cinder and Kai from Kai's perspective. That scene happens in the first book and I love seeing it from Kai's perspective. It was just adorable. Kyder, which is Kai and Cinder, is my favorite couple from the Lunar Chronicles, closely followed by Jason and Winter. So they were my favorite to read about. <laughs> And then something else something new I gave five to five stars for many reasons. Um, the big event in it I find adorable and fun to read, but also there's a thing that happens right at the end, which I wish was focused on a lot more. And it's between one of my favorite couples, and it just like got me crying because I'm so emotional. And yeah, overall a four to five stars. Love this, love the series. I really want to reread the series now because I'm just like getting all my memories of how much I love the series. But I have a TBR and I can't stray from it. But I'm also getting into that like slumpy mode when I read something I really like or like I read about characters I really like and then I'm like I don't want to read anything else so I'm trying to stifle that but a deadly education isn't really doing it for me so I don't know how that's gonna help this slumpy mood I'm in but yeah that was stars above it was on my clear shit read from TBR like I mentioned so I already crossed it off and that was for on the shelf the longest which I explained so we're making progress through this slowly but surely and yeah, that's kind of all I have to say. I'm happy to finally finish this, but also kind of sad that like there's no more in the Lunar Chronicles to read for me. But I anticipate rereading at least some of the books in the series soon because it's been quite a while. And every time I read Marissa Meyer's writing in like this series, because like her writing in Renegades is similar, obviously, same author, but like something about this series just gives me that vibe. Like it just warms my heart. It makes me so happy. It's probably my own personal memories attached to it as well. That's like clouding my judgment as well but that's okay everyone has a bias and this is mine i haven't really read any more of deadly, deadly education so i can't really like tell you anything else about that i'm like 50 pages in it's okay i'm still really confused though i think that the description of the world is lacking because it keeps just throwing out terms but not defining them and then expecting me to know what they mean i'm like um just because you wrote the word out doesn't mean that it makes sense so <laughs> we're kind of struggling but I am determined to make it through because I don't really like DNFing anymore so yeah that's me I'm gonna go take a bath I'm always taking baths I think it's just because I read more effectively in the bath and also like I always just have pent-up anxiety and like soaking in water makes it better 
I'm also in lots of pain from my period cramps, so like, I'm sad. I'm hoping I can keep up this like productive reading energy, because last week was really good for reading, and today was really good for reading, I finished a whole book, so I'm hoping that daily education doesn't ruin my like mojo too too much, with being a little bit confusing, but we'll see, we'll see. So my phone currently is dying, which is great because it'll keep me on a time limit so I don't ramble for too long, because I can't stand editing myself rambling because I just have a hard time getting my point across, but I have notes about thoughts let's see if we can get this done so a deadly education i'm currently over halfway i'm on page 181 so i've made progress i've actually read exactly 100 pages today because yesterday i got onto page 81 and i hate to say but i'm liking this <laughs> i was really upset earlier because it's taking me so long to read this and i was still so confused still a bit confused um i'll get to that though but i really like the main character now and I'm really liking her and Orion's friendship that's like developing and has like developed. Sue me! I like it. <laughs> I don't like the writing or the world building because it's kind of really bad, but I just- I love the characters. The chapters are so long though, like <laughs> the first one was 17 pages and they've just gotten longer since. Like I'm on page 181, I've just hit chapter 9. So <laughs> I'm not a fan of long chapters, it makes it feel really like boring and like dragging on to read, like you're not making any progress, but that being said, even though the chapters are really long, there is a lot of action, like it is relatively quick paced, like scenes don't drag on too long, it kind of goes like event to event to event to event, and I enjoy that, that's cool, but other than that I don't really like the writing, I'll probably talk about that more when I finish the book, because I don't really want to right now, because right now I'm about to talk about the representation, so there was a controversy, a plenty, about this book. One of them was pertaining to a uh, uh, snippet that had something about dreadlocks in it. I haven't gotten to that scene yet, and I don't really intend to talk about that right now, because I haven't read it yet, and I don't have the context, so whatever. But I have been seeing people criticize the biracial rep in this book. So the main character, Elle, is half Indian and half Welsh, which is like half white. In other terms, she is South Asian and white. I am also South Asian and white. So I am, I guess technically, own voices in a way. I'm not Indian, I am Sri Lankan, which is a tiny island off of India, but those are semantics. For the point I'm trying to make, we are the same mix, okay? And people have been saying things, and I've seen tweets and stuff like that, saying that Elle is a white girl with brown skin, which is so incredibly rude and insensitive and ignorant to say. Um, and I like, I, I'll try and get into it here, but biracial people, and specifically biracial people who are mixed with white, <laughs> are constantly being belittled and like, people don't accept that they're like POC and that they face racism and stuff because of that white side all the time. People saying that her culture isn't involved enough in her personality, I think is so dumb because every time people talk about diversity and wanting other races in books, they want those other races to constantly be talking about their culture, quote unquote, as in that's a part of their personality, which it isn't. You know what I mean? Like as a, I think the term is diaspora, someone who's not like residing in the country that like their ethnicity is from, you know what I mean? I don't have any really connections to my Sri Lankan culture. My mom is Sri Lankan and she doesn't really do any of those kind of things, so I don't either. But it doesn't make me any less technically Sri Lankan or person of color, you know what I mean? So people saying that she doesn't engage with her Indian culture enough so she's not really good representation is bullshit, you know what I mean? Because everybody's situation is different, it doesn't make her any less of a person of color, you know what I mean? And that being said, she does engage with her Indian culture in some ways. She does speak a language that is commonly spoken in India. I can't remember what it was because there's a lot of languages mentioned in here, but she does speak one of those and she does have an awareness of Indian history. And her having that much connection to Indian culture is also commendable because her father, who is the parent that she gets the Indian side from, uh, died and his family shunned her because of a prophecy. So she doesn't have any way to have a connection to Indian culture because she's being raised by her white parent in Wales. So I don't see why people are not taking the context into key when they're talking about her biracialness, because she really doesn't have a connection, like she doesn't have a living connection to India. So how would she have a connection to the culture when her parent, who is Indian, is dead and that family has shunned her? So like how, how would that have worked? Like I get it, the author's white. So this is not own voices rep. She's white to my knowledge. I couldn't get like a definitive answer, but I'm pretty sure she's white. 
But as a biracial person who is the same general mix as her, I do find this fine representation and I do not see a lot of biracial representation. So I really appreciate seeing a biracial main character because a lot of times you don't have a biracial main character. So I'm really happy reading this biracial character because I do relate to her on a lot of facets about her race and her biracialness and how she's been treated. So I don't like seeing people talking about how this is shitty biracial rep and talking about how she's like white basically and not realizing how ignorant and rude that is to biracial people who have not been fully accepted as people of color and their struggles not really heard because of their white side. So thanks. <laughs> My point is just that maybe listen to biracial people and also understand the context behind her life. So I don't see where the criticisms about her and her race and her presenting of her culture is coming from, you know? Is it just because the author is white? And I do agree on some levels that white people shouldn't be writing the experiences of other races like they know what they're like. But this seems to me like it's at least somewhat well researched because I have related to a lot of this and nothing seems outwardly horrible <laughs> in the vein of the main character's experience, you know what I mean? So I don't know where people are coming from. I think that the biracial rap is fine. I'm actually really appreciating it. So I just thought I'd get my little two cents out there. But yeah, that's like the deep shit I wanted to talk about. I really need to get a copy of this book for myself because there's a lot of things I really want to annotate. But I just found out that the hardcover is being sold for $35 in Canada. And if you don't know how Canadian books are priced, adult hardcovers are 35 plus dollars and what young adult um hardcovers are about 25 dollars so this book is being marketed as ya but apparently sold as adult which is something i didn't know but is mildly interesting because this book does follow like 16 year old characters so i don't know why it's being sold as adult mm. i'm liking it there's things that i still don't like but in general i'm really enjoying it and i just want to keep reading it but i have school work to do which is Great. I don't think I actually gave you a full synopsis. I'll get future Bailey to give you a better synopsis when I finish the book. So I finished this and the ending was trash so I'm displeased. Um, I'm giving this like a two. So this disappointing. Will I read the sequel? Most likely. Will I still buy myself a copy? Most likely. But this wasted potential i'll talk about this later when it's not like nighttime and i'm trying to sleep but like the ending redeeming qualities i don't see any right now so we'll discuss later welcome to my car so i just bought a copy of a deadly education by naomi novik did i like this book no did i still want a copy yes i want to annotate it and i intend to read the rest of the series so i like to have all the books myself anyway so, like I suspected, based on the price, this is being sold in adult fantasy um, for $35 rather than YA, which is $25 for a hardback. Now, I find this very curious because all of the characters are 18 and under, and in this book most of them are 16. Doesn't sound like an adult age range to me. Next thing, there's no graphic or explicit sex scenes or violence, usually a marker of adult fantasy. Um, and I've only seen this book marketed as YA, so I find it interesting that it's got all the YA shit, but then cashing in on that sweet, sweet adult fantasy cash. Just thought it was a little interesting, just thought I'd bring that to y'all's attention. Call me a detective, because I'm putting all the clues together. I just thought that was a little interesting, so you're welcome for that great tidbit of information. I'm editing this, and I never mentioned this, but I should have. Um, but I do understand that some adult fantasy books do follow teens, but they have adult content. That's why they're shelved in adult fantasy, because some part of them is not meant for teens or young adults. It's not appropriate, whatever. But this book, it's not written like an adult fantasy. The characters are not overly mature. The dialogue is not adult. <laughs> Um, a lot of it's pretty childish. Like, it just doesn't give me adult vibes at all. Like, there's nothing about this book that I think should be in the adult section. I think it should definitely be YA. Also, if you're gonna market yourself as YA and be written like a YA book and just basically be a YA book but for some reason have the adult price tag, 
I don't know, I think it's weird. Anyway. <laughs> hey there, a little bit of a long time no see. To briefly explain that, basically this week was really, really, really busy with school. So I finished a daily education and then had to like grind the last few days before winter break, which I'm on now. Uh, I had to grind it out with the schoolwork, you know what I mean? So I couldn't really update you or ever actually review a deadly, deadly education, which I'm going to attempt to do now after I kind of explain further what has kind of gone on since I last talked to you. First off, really exciting. I got admitted into my dream university on December 15th and that was amazing. I was really shell-shocked and really stressed at first because obviously early admission is conditional, the condition being that you keep your grades up, <laughs> and for some reason, even though I've been maintaining the grades I have this whole year and my whole school career, I in that moment was like, your grades are about to drop, they're about to go down. <laughs> so I was real stressed for like two days after that and I finally like let it sink in, let myself like realize, hey, you're good. Like, you got in, they want you, and you're fine. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. It's letting a lot of my university stress off my shoulders, which is great. But yeah, other than that, I haven't really read anything. I finished off school, and now I'm on winter break for, I think, two weeks. It might be, like, a little bit more than two weeks, but whatever. I'm going to be vlogging over winter break. I just need to finish this vlog, upload it, and then I'm going to start vlogging for the first week of winter break. Um, but deadly education, I need to review that. And this is gonna sound dumb, but I finished this book on Monday and it's now Saturday and I kind of don't remember all the details of what I had to say. But the good thing about that is that I wrote it all out in a Goodreads review, which is linked in the description. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not gonna verbalize these thoughts to you well. So if you really want my thoughts and you want them laid out like really nicely, <laughs> read the Goodreads review because it has all my thoughts. Um, I took a long time on it. I actually don't spend a lot of time on Goodreads reviews because I just kind of hate writing them. But sometimes I do write them. I take my time out of the day to write them when I feel the need to. And this is one of the times I did. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to attempt to review A Deadly Education. So pray for me. First, I'm going to give you a better synopsis, which is going to suck ass because I hate giving synopsises because I never really gave you a good one. But this book follows a girl named Elle. And in this woods, like the normal world, but with like it's urban fantasy, I'd say. Um, basically, there's wizards. Um, are they called wizards in this book? I fucking don't remember. <laughs> I'm gonna call them wizards because I can't remember if they called themselves wizards. <laughs> I don't think they did. So they go to the school. The young wizards <laughs> go to the school called the Scalamans. It's a multi-tiered school that exists in this like magical void, basically. Um, basically, you start as a freshman at the top and then slowly every year you move down until you get to the graduation hall level, which is filled with these things called mal... I think that was what they were called. Malficaria, I think they were called mal's. Um, and basically the males want to kill you. To graduate, you have to survive the graduation hall without dying and get out of the skull mans. Great stuff. Um, the main character, like I said, was Elle. She is in her saw junior, junior year, <laughs> the year before graduation. And she's got this affinity for like evil or like destructive magic. An affinity is basically like something you're preemptively good at, whatever. So she's good at that, but it's not really useful because that's kind of evil, you know what I mean? And then there's this guy named Orion Lake, and he's Orion, it's not Orion, it's Orion. Um, I kept saying it wrong. Um, he is like the hero of the grade. He, I don't even know what his affinity was. I'm gonna get into the fact this book has horrible world building, but we'll get into that later. But I don't know, he's like the hero. He keeps saving people, even though like the Scholomance kind of runs off people dying throughout their time there because that's what feeds the mouths and whatever. That's how you weed out the competition, the wheat from the chaff, whatever. Orion starts kind of following her around for multiple reasons and it's like a dark academia sort of shebang. Um, bad. Didn't like it. I liked it at one point, now I don't like it. I need to split this, in, this book into parts to explain my rating of it. Basically, the beginning was like a one or two. The middle like a three and then the end like a one or a two so i gave it a two which is pretty generous i'd probably give it a 1.5 honestly here's what's up the world building is atrocious um it just brings up terms without ever explaining them to you and the only way i have any general knowledge of the magic system is because i read the whole freaking book and that's not how that should be like obviously you have to read a whole book to really fully understand something but you should be bringing up terms and then expecting me to know them even though you never define them when you're making up a magic system. And it's not like this book withholds information, like it's not telling you things. This book is constantly info dumping. Like, 
pages long info dumping but actually telling you nothing in essence because they don't explain the magical terms they're talking about so that was annoying that was really frustrating to read when you're like trying to get into it but you're like i don't know what you're talking about i didn't like the writing either that ties into the world building i just didn't like the vibe the way it was written it was like l was talking to me she was like i know what you're thinking and i'm like I'm thinking that I don't understand your world, but go on. Characters, Elle I did enjoy, but I also didn't like that she kind of was a little bit I'm not like other girls, um, in the sense she's like, oh, my magic is all evil, it's all destructive, and I can never show my true potential, and I'm always fighting the bad. And it was kind of just annoying, and she was always kind of like, I'm super powerful, but never showed me. Like, throughout this book, she only ever really does an impressive feat of mag magic once. Like, even in the climax, she doesn't do anything that impressive that's like, shows her crazy different power level or different power affinity it just like bored me like there was just no nothing exciting in the climax or with her powers like it never really paid off the whole time she's talking about how different she is and how powerful she is but she never really shows us like yeah she does one thing but then like she just does it on her own and nobody knows about it as soon as that one event happened i thought she was gonna like start doing more stuff she didn't which is delightful or Orion, I enjoyed him. He was, like, kind of cute in a shy way. Like, usually the guy character's, like, this big buff dude, you know what I mean? And kind of, like, abrasive and intrusive. Orion was a little bit intrusive, but, like, not on purpose in, like, a soft boy kind of way. He's definitely a soft boy. Um, I appreciated it. I'm not that big a fan of, like, the noble characters who are so selfish, selfless, but I thought he was okay. The characters are fine. Um, I did really like the friendships that were built because Elle has a really hard time making friends. One, because of her attitude, because she just has a shit attitude, which I'm not judging her for because I do too. I'm not going to judge a loser for being a loser because, like, so am I. But she does make friends throughout this book. Uh, but she also has, like, weird, like, aura around her because of her magic, but whatever. But, like, I really enjoyed watching her make friends and her friend group by the end of it. Like, I thought it was cute. I liked their bond. I liked how that developed. That was cute. I did end up crying at one point in this book. I don't remember what page it was on. I wrote in my notes on my phone. But there's a scene where she's at this lunch table and she's lamenting about how people always avoid her and she never has anyone to sit with at lunch. And I was crying because, not to get too personal about how much of a loser I am, um, in grade 10, I went to a different school than I was at in grade 9. In Canada, 10 to 12 is high school. Basically, I went to a school from 8 to 9 and then that school also has... 10 to 12, but I ended up leaving grade 10 and I went to a different school and made not a single friend and I was that kid who ate lunch in the bathroom every day. Um, that sounds so pathetic, cause it is. I ended up going back to my previous school in grade 11 and I'm still there and I'm gonna graduate from there. So I'm fine now, ish. But that was really fucking depressing. And I read that whole little thing, how she was so sad about that and like lamenting about how she's friendless <laughs> and then these people came and sat with her and I was crying because it just reminded me of how much of a fucking loser I am um and how pathetic I was in grade 10 so <laughs> that did make me cry and usually if a book makes you cry I will give it five stars but this was just so atrocious in other areas I just couldn't let's talk about the end uh, it was bad it was so anticlimactic like completely and like this book brings up a lot of questions answers none not at all answers nothing and it's impressive to me how little this book explains, but not in like an artful way where you like interpret things. No, just in like a, hey, we're gonna ignore this complete raging plot hole forever. Like what? I, it bothered me a lot. Like this is a trilogy, I do believe, but I'm sorry, you need to flesh out your magic system a lot more. So the main relationship in this book was not explained at all. The end was like this weird conversation where like, I, I have no idea whether or not they're together or what they communicated in that conversation and there's like no real answer to that question so who knows i don't know are they dating i don't think so but they might be because it never actually tells me if they're not so who knows like the actual climactic thing is so anticlimactic because like one l our perspective character isn't even really involved in it like she's there but she's not in the action her life is never threatened she's never actually doing magic offensively um orion is and she's just kind of watching him do it and i'm like okay suspense climactic action we don't know her you know what i mean and it's just over and it's fine the author can spend 10 pages info dumping and actually telling us nothing but not maybe 10 pages on an exciting climax yikes 
Next, no, the controversy. The author's white, to my knowledge, and there was ample controversy going on about race in this book. Now, I've already addressed the biracial, biracial stuff. I still think it's fine. Um, I don't have any real complaints about that. I'm not gonna say it's the best representation of biracialness ever because I do prefer own voices stuff most of the time, but I don't think anything was explicitly wrong about it or insensitive. The dreadlocks comment, um, I did read it, I got there at some point, and I don't believe this line was intended to be racist. That being said, it was insensitive given the connotation around dreadlocks and cleanliness, and it's not something I can speak on. I'm also not black and that's also not my culture, but I'm going to say that I don't believe the intentions were racist. That doesn't mean that it's okay. I'm just saying when we call Naomi Novik like a racist, maybe don't use that line as evidence because that's not, it's very clearly not meant to be like that. I feel like with this controversy, a big thing is lack of context because in the context of the book, it's actually talking about how your hair is just in general a hazard for males to like get in there and eat your scalp away. So it's not specifically a dreads issue. I just thought this book was kind of bad. <laughs> so will I be reading the sequel? Yes, because as much as this book answers no questions, I still have hope that maybe the sequels will answer some. Probably not because this was so horribly written and so horribly executed, but maybe, but maybe. This book has such a nice cover though, and the sequel has one too, so that makes me really sad. But yeah, two out of five stars, probably like a 1.5. Don't recommend, but read if you want. <laughs> this month is almost over. It's the 19th, I do believe, yeah. And I've currently finished five things on my Clear Your Shit TBR, Clear Your Shit Read on TBR, um, and I have a lot to go, which will not be completed. But here's a check-in. Teehee. Uh, a Deadly Education was my free choice book. Which we're making our way slowly through that. I don't intend to finish it, but I intend to get as far through as I can. But yeah, that's kind of all I got. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Bailey. This has been a reading vlog. Bye-bye. <laughs>